Today on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino, I'm honored to have the consummate gentleman politician join me. You won't find a finer person in elected office in California than Pasadena's Mayor Bill Bogard. Stay tuned and meet a man full of quiet confidence and dignity, sharing his life and his legacy that has shepherded one of California's finest cities for nearly two decades. Many just call him Mayor Bill or Mr. Mayor. He's a gentleman and a statesman that has healed many divides in his city. For our country, he brings in the new year on January 1st for millions during the Tournament of Roses parade. But he's leaving office early next year, which is having many wonder how his terrific and gigantic shoes are going to be filled. I'm so honored to welcome my friend and colleague, Mayor Bill Bogard to The Question Is with Anthony Portentino. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Anthony, very much, and thank you for your introduction. Absolutely. It's really an honor to have you here with us today. You've done so much, and Pasadena is such a highly regarded and well-respected city and community, and frankly, a lot of that has been due to your leadership over the last two decades. Well, the city has been uh, prominent and uh, prestigious for many decades, and I'm delighted to have had a, an opportunity to provide leadership the last 15 years. See that humble to humble with every single breath, which is why everybody <laughs> likes you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Um, but you've had two stints on the city council, but I, I want to sort of talk about your early career. Um, you went to Loyola undergrad, um, and then you graduated from Loyola, and then what happened after that? I was commissioned into the Air Force uh, as a lieutenant following mm -hmm. uh, f completion of the ROTC program at college. And I spent the next 12 months studying at UCLA, studying meteorology because I was assigned to the Air Weather Service. Mm -hmm. And after that 12 months, uh, I was uh, reassigned to Casablanca, Morocco. At that time, there were strategic air command bases uh, in Morocco that needed to be briefed on weather en route to Eastern European targets. Uh, we lived in a different age than we have today. So there were truth to the rumors that the Humphrey Bogart character was uh, <laughs> modeled after you in, in Casablanca? Well, uh, better said, I tried to live up to his reputation when I was there. There you go, there you go. So we had some strategic uh, military presence in Morocco for the, at the time, so you were there for 22 months straight? I was there for a couple of years straight, um, except uh, at, after I had arrived uh, three or four months later, pursuant to a plan that my wife Claire and I had uh, concocted before I left. I came home, we were married, and we went back together. Went back together. So then, uh, and obviously uh, Mrs. Bogard later on when we talk about preservation and some other issues played prom has played a prominent role as well. Uh, in our wonderful city of Pasadena. She's been enormously influential uh, with her colleagues at Pasadena Heritage right. in shaping the city. Absolutely. So after uh, Morocco, then you went into uh, law school. I did. I went directly from Casablanca, Morocco through Charleston, South Carolina to process out of military service and drove up to Ann Arbor, Michigan. To go to attend the University of Michigan. Now, does that create any kind of dilemma during some Rose Bowl games when Southern California teams play Michigan, or how do you handle I mean, that must be one of the more difficult things <laughs> you have to navigate. To well, I grew up in Iowa and, of course, attended the Michigan Law School. I also attended UCLA for 12 months, as we've mentioned. Right. And then uh, for a couple of years, I was a law professor at the USC Law School. This was before I took office as mayor uh, in 1999. So I have some loyalties that are not easy to reconcile at I, times. I was gonna say, uh, it's, a good, uh, it's a good pedigree and a good resume, but on the sports field, I'm sure it presents some dilemmas uh, from time to time. But obviously that's one of the fun things and uh, what Pasadena is so well known for is, is the Tournament of Roses and, and your true. presence and leadership uh, has been tremendous. Now, at law school you met Dick Gephardt, who uh, had a, career not quite as distinguished as yours, but uh, <laughs> we'll give him some props. I should say, no, um, 
Uh, Dick and I engaged as freshman uh, students along with a couple of other friends uh, in a uh, mock trial mm -hmm. program that was used to expose the students to uh, trial court or appellate practice. We studied cases, prepared briefs, and then we argued those uh, in a moot court competition. And uh, Dick and I, uh, uh, I'm very grateful, have been friends ever since. It's a shame he didn't become president because then maybe you would have been attorney general uh, <laughs> of, of our country. But it's always been, uh, I've always enjoyed your references to him and your friendship and loyalty to him as he ran for president. Absolutely. Uh, you were certainly a, a big help to him. Um, then you went into obviously banking and into the corporate world and the downtown law firm world and excelled. Um, I, I spent uh, uh, about 18 years practicing law, mm -hmm. uh, doing financial transactions, mergers and acquisitions and public offerings, corporate board counseling. Uh, I was recruited to First Interstate in the early 80s uh, and became general counsel of the holding company and uh, continued there for about 14 years before uh, a merger occurred between First Interstate and Wells Fargo. And it was at that point that I was freed up to do something a little non-traditional, and I taught law at Michigan for a year as mm -hmm. a visiting professor, taught law part-time as an adjunct at USC. And uh, that brings us up to the fall of 98 when I cast my hat in the ring to be the first directly elected mayor of Pasadena. Right, which was a historic change. The city went through a... Um, uh, a change in its charter to create the elected official, but before that, you served eight years uh, as a city council member. That's in your true. First, your first tour, uh, I'll call it tour of duty, because any politician <laughs> sometimes it's a it's a tour of duty. So you spent eight years on the city council as a council member. I did. I was uh, uh, drawn into service on the city council uh, in in the late seventies, when uh, my predecessor on the council from Southwest Pasadena resigned early mm -hmm. and um, I was ultimately selected to serve out that term and ran again, served a total of eight years on the city council mm -hmm. ending in 1986. Now at the time Pasadena was, I, I, I'll use the phrase growing pains, uh, there was a lot of economic development around the country, a lot of pros prosperity and, and that became a central focus of many of the land use debates and decisions in Pasadena which landed in your lap and your calming voice and influence played a significant well, role. Thanks. So walk us through some of the things that we take for granted today that were preserved and some of the things that were planned at the, during that time, if you could. Uh. Well, during that first period in the 80s when I served on the council, it was a very intense period of debate in the community uh, about what kind of community we wanted Pasadena to be. Right. The, direction of the business community was to uh, seek out corporate headquarters. Uh, one example would be Parsons Corporation and accommodate them in every way we can to attract them to Pasadena and to provide uh, employment and to provide community participation as Parsons has traditionally done. But another viewpoint emerged uh, in the late 70s. Pasadena Heritage was formed in 1978 and immediately set about to teach the community and City Hall uh, that there was another direction for the city to pursue, and that was historic preservation, mm -hmm. managed growth, uh, and uh, during the next 10 or 12 years, uh, uh, the debate about what the, what the futures, what the community strategy should be for the future for economic development was intense. Right. There were lawsuits, there were initiatives, there were hearings with three, four hundred people. Right. And you were ground zero for many of those conversations. <laughs> well, I, I was. Uh, uh, I would say that the activism on the part of uh, Pasadena Heritage was strong and took on a, a lot of weight. There was concern in the community about uh, some of the demolition that had occurred. Right, some things that had sort of snuck, were demolished before the conversation could happen. Exactly. Sort of galvanized people to say, well, wait a minute. Um, and so well, there were several moratorium that were enacted, different strategic pl planning and land use decisions. No question. With each one having its own 
series of raucous public hearings. Debates. There's no question about it. It was, it was an intense time, quite different, I must say, from the environment in Pasadena over the last 15 years. Right. Right. And it was also at the time the city, wasn't it just turning 100 at the time? Wasn't uh, it similar? Yes. Of the uh, I think the birth date of Pasadena was 1886. So it was uh, going to a, a centennial. In fact, uh, uh, there was a preparation, a wonderful ceremony, a celebration right. on the steps of City Hall to celebrate the 100th birthday. Wonderful. And so you're navigating these um, different pieces of the Pasadena puzzle. Obviously, there was a proud business community at the time. Pasadena Heritage came about, um, and it really, this, I mean, we all know Old Town, and we all know the Convention Center. We all know the things that we enjoy very in very commonplace, but prior to that, they didn't exist. Well, they certainly didn't exist in the, in the way that they do today. You asked about what are some of the uh, threats that were overcome. The YWCA mm -hmm. was sold by the YWCA organization because it was too expensive to maintain. And the, uh, that's, that, that building sits uh, you know, in front of City Hall. It's a wonderful c contributor to the Civic Center. The first thought of, uh, of, uh, the, of the business community was to knock it down and do something different. Uh, I would say uh, the Colorado Street Bridge Right. was under threat because it needed seismic work. And uh, the idea was that we had a freeway bridge there, the 134. We didn't need the other bridge, the other bridge that connected uh, the Arroyo neighborhood uh, uh, with the San Rafael neighborhood. Right. But once again, historic preservation stepped forward and, and was successful in, in saving that. There were other serious uh, threats. Old Pasadena as a whole was, uh, was under threat uh, for demolition because that was the development concept that existed at the time. But ultimately, uh, uh, there was a very gradual change of mentality starting to recognize that Pasadena could be prosperous and it could be unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully those uh, characteristics uh, are, uh, are true today. Were you the only lawyer on the council at the time? Uh, you might have I been. I don't remember. You might have been. I don't remember. So, but I'm sure that you. Uh, there was a, a person named Don Yokaitis. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a, he was a, a trial attorney, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there Joe Heckman was a realtor. Ellis Jones, M.D., was a physician. Uh, Jess Houston. Now, at the time, the city did not have an elected mayor. It had no. a rotating mayor, so there were seven votes on the city council, and it rotated by the majority of, of the council. That's true. Uh, the, the guiding principle in the selection of the mayor every two years was seniority. Ah, okay. And that, uh, that, that, that tradition never was broken. So it was a two-year mayor's rotation based on seniority. It was. So did you you got to be mayor during your first? I had I eight had the years. privilege of serving as mayor under that methodology from 1984 to 1986. 1984 to 1986, and so many of the plans and and I don't want to call them let's call them heated conversations proved to be productive, which during your second time in office uh, bore fruit. Well, that's true because uh, ultimately this took place after I finished my service in the 80s. Uh, the controversies came to a head. Uh, there was litigation. There was a litigation settlement subject to the city's adoption of a general plan that would be consistent with the principles that the neighbors, the activists, were seeking. And that general plan came to fruition in 19... 1994. 1994. Uh, it called for uh, urban style of development in the downtown, preserving our, our neighborhoods from intrusive development. It encouraged historic preservation. It viewed Pasadena as a regional center for arts and culture and academia and for business and jobs. And uh, that very set of principles reflected in the 1994 general plan have guided Pasadena's development since then, 
during the 90s, there, weren't, there wasn't very much development. Right. But at the end of the century, at the end of that decade, uh, the tide turned, the economy was strong, and a lot of development occurred. And that's when Pasadena, starting in 1999, started taking on its current uh, shape. Right. Well, that is interesting both from a historical and an economic perspective. And when we come back on the question is, we'll see how the planning that uh, Mayor Bogard uh, contributed to back in the 80s continues to guide the city today. Come back on the question is and hear more from the great mayor. Nothing ever gonna make this world better If we don't start believing That love really, really, really is the answer Everybody join hands cause it's time now We're back on The Question Is with Anthony Portentino with Pasadena's great mayor, Bill Bogard. In our first segment, we heard a lot about how the plans that were put in place in the 80s laid the foundation. I'm pleased to have uh, Mr. Mayor here talk a little bit about how the city has grown, but also been protected for the, from the laudable works that you and Pasadena Heritage uh, brought about in the 80s. But before I do that, um, in addition to being you know, the gentleman politician, you raised your family in Pasadena. You have uh, four children. We have four children, and they, uh, uh, for the most part, attended public schools. Mm -hmm. Three graduated from Blair High School, and one graduated um, as a basketball player at uh, Flint Ridge Prep. So again, you were artful in navigating the fight between Muir and <laughs> Pasadena High School by having your children go through Blair. You were taken out of that uh, divisive issue in the city of Pasadena. <laughs> Right. Very artful of you. Uh, you mentioned uh, in the first segment how important the arts are to Pasadena. And I would say there's probably no other city in California that puts as much effort into public art, into art night, into art walk. Um, how did that all come about? It's a, it's a tradition that has long roots when you think of organizations like the Pasadena Playhouse, uh, the Pasadena Symphony. Uh, the Norton Simon Museum, the Huntington Library, uh, which are uh, pillars of Pasadena's arts and culture uh, legacy, uh, uh, you realize that they've been around a long time. But uh, the people of Pasadena, uh, the, the supporters of arts and culture, work very hard to create new opportunities. Uh, just in the last uh, 10 or 12 years, we have uh, the Levitt Pavilion right. in Pasadena, 50 free concerts uh, in Memorial Park every right. summer. That's a lot of music. It is, and uh, it's wonderful from my point of view to, to see that be available to everyone who wants to come and bring a picnic basket and have some fun, the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way, and a lot of people don't know uh, outside of Pasadena that the Pasadena Playhouse is the state theater for the state of California. It was named the State Theater of California uh, many years ago in its early years. Right, and uh, I think that's something that we're all proud of locally to, no to continue to do that. And it is a wonderful, beautiful venue that again has been preserved uh, true. in its original state and, and thriving with its uh, outreach and, and education programs that it does as well. It was, it was acquired by the city to save it from a wrecking ball uh, by a, a bank that was wanting to collect its debt. Uh, this was in the late 70s. And right. then the question was, what does City Hall do now? And the decision by the council at the time was not a penny more of uh, investment uh, is that will be made, but let's find a developer who's willing to front the cost. And ultimately, although it was, there were a few knocks along the way, uh, it was redevelopment developed on that basis, saved and redeveloped and then reactivated. Right, and the latest reviews of Kiss Me Kate are phenomenal, so the, it's The Playhouse is doing very well due to the current leadership, and I, I compliment the, the executive director, the business manager, and, and the board. Right, now the city also owns the Rose Bowl, but it's operated by a operating company at the be on behalf of the city. Exactly. Uh, the members of the board of directors of the Rose Bowl Operating Company are appointed by the council. Appointed at the council. Now, 
during your first time in office there was a rotating mayorship during your second time uh, the city went through a charter amendment to create an elected mayor uh, for the first time in the history of uh, of the city certainly in the first time in uh, almost a hundred years Almost a hundred years and so the charter was changed were you thinking about running for mayor during that process or was this the classic example of the public reaching out to find a, a statesman to be the equal to the <laughs> challenge. Well, I won't adopt uh, either category, uh, 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 but I will say that when the voters in the in November of, of 1998 approved a charter change calling for a directly elected mayor for a four-year term, elected by the city as a whole, uh, friends came to me and said, "Listen, throw your hat in the ring." and uh, we want you to be the first uh, elected mayor and we want you to set the tone for the position and ultimately i decided to do that it came at the right time in terms of my professional obligations right and i think that's why we're all you know sort of scratching our head right now because <laughs> you set that tone for the past 14 years uh, magnificently well, and thank you and there were many candidates who ran were there? there were 10 candidates in that uh, in that race in 19 99 uh, the race took place the election was in March and uh, 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 there were two leading candidates when the first vote was taken uh, my friend Chris Holden and I were the top vote getters and we had a runoff in late April and I was I was elected by the people right you were elected by the people and that created a council of eight votes That's which interestingly in the past 14 years, you haven't seen that many 4-4 four, four, uh, deadlocks because with an, with an even number of votes, uh, it's conceivable that sometimes it would deadlock 4-4, four, four, but that hasn't happened all that often. No, and I think, I think it's not likely to happen to be a notable experience of the council, even with a, an even number, because uh, under our charter, it takes a majority vote to pass a, any matter. And with eight members, five votes and so a four to four vote which has happened a, a few times is simply a failed motion right no different from one that would be uh, two four and six against right right now during your last 14 years there's been some wonderful projects in addition to the preservation of and the thriving of the Pasadena uh, Playhouse uh, Old Town has exploded and in a way where it preserved the character of its original architecture, but also brought in some new businesses in accordance with the plans that you guys adopted back in the, in the, mid, in, in the mid 80s. Well, the vision of Pasadena Heritage in the late 70s, early 80s was that Old Pasadena could be a vital retail and restaurant center. It could serve the city with tax revenues, but also add a unique character and dynamism that uh, should be should be pursued. And uh, giving credit to where it's due, to Pasadena Heritage, that's the vision that has been realized now in modern times. And speaking, using the word modern, it's also connected to the Gold Line, which well, it, you were a true. central figure in, in shepherding the Gold Line through its first phase. Uh, how did that come about? Adam Schiff, our congressman at the time, was a senator who carried the bill to set up the Gold Line Construction Authority. You were part of that conversation as well. Well, that's true. Interestingly, the um, uh, Gold Line was a dream in the 1980s, but not too much happened. Uh, it was still a, a vision, a plan, but not too much happened until 1998 when Adam Schiff, then a state senator, was successful in uh, achieving legislation which took the project away from the MTA, the Metro, and placed it in the hands of a of single purpose agency, the Construction Authority. And from that point on, with Pasadena was very supportive of the project, but we had a lot at stake, six stations in Pasadena. Right. Uh, it moved forward and opened in July of 2003. Right, and to me that's the, the ultimate blend of the modern technology of a light rail uh, connecting into the wonderfully preserved Old Town Pasadena. And I hadn't realized it's actually six stations when it goes to the east. That's true. There are six stations of the Gold Line in, in the city of Pasadena. And, That's true. And certainly through the leadership of the city at the time and Congressman then Senator Schiff, mm -hmm. um, the eastern cities are going to benefit as it matriculates 
towards the Ontario airport. I, I should mention uh, just briefly that uh, within 18 months from this conversation, the next phase of the Gold Line is expected to operate from East Pasadena to Azusa, a 12-mile stretch. Within the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. And I'd add a, a note that by having it be a standalone construction authority, it's actually getting more miles per dollar than the MTA does on its other construction. So it's a lean, it's a lean government agency when everybody's bashing, uh, you know, what can government do right? Certainly light rail is something that the construction authority has done very well. It has, um, you know, everyone bragged uh, when the uh, first phase of the system went into operation that uh, it was on time and on budget. Right. And um, that's going to be the claim because it's true uh, for the next phase uh, right. to Azusa. Right. And so connecting people movers to wonderful destinations, the convention center was uh, revitalized and, and redone. That was also something under your, was that a, a, a contentious issue? How did that play out? Or it seemed like something people wanted to be done. I would say that the case was strong for uh, elevating the uh, uh, strength and the responsiveness of the convention center. Uh, uh, it just needed a, a big, bigger base from which to operate to attract more uh, lucrative and larger conventions mm -hmm. and um, the, the since the system has been since the new uh, building the convention center has been completed about four years ago it's been operating uh, very actively now the rose bowl game again the tournament of roses is a separate nonprofit the stadium is owned by the city but operated by an operating company but the the partnership of of those entities um, certainly accounts for significant economic benefit to Pasadena and the city of Los Angeles um, it, to the tune of millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, That's true. How does that all work in concert and what do you, can you share some of the, those, those statistics with us? Well, the most recent study of economic impact from uh, a Rose Bowl game indicates that Southern California, uh, with the Rose Bowl at the center of the affected region, benefits to the tune of about $350 million of indirect business activity, mm -hmm. hotels and restaurants and retail activity. Uh, the Rose Bowl has been a, a great factor in Pasadena's strength and reputation and uh, vitality. And uh, the fact that we aren't able, because of limited territory and limited hotels, to capture all the benefit is really not a uh, problem uh, because uh, we capture enough benefit uh, so that uh, it's clearly worth uh, continuing to support the Tournament of Roses in that great tradition. Uh, we've got about a minute and a half left. I do want to cover that in your capacity as mayor, you've also branched out. You were president of the League of California Cities, both statewide and LA County. Uh, you've played a significant leadership role in preserving local government revenues with Prop 1A, um, in all those places you continue to be successful and effective with a very sound mission. How have you been able to start out in 1970s and here we are in 2014 and still be the same person? That's my curveball <laughs> question. Listen, uh, I What was did Mrs. Bogart do well when you were growing <laughs> up for all those other politicians out there? Um, uh, I would say that um, uh, you know, I've just tried to participate in the life of the city on the opportunities that I had in the 80s and now presently uh, in the way that comes naturally to me. Uh, I do think if, if people ask me, if high schoolers ask me, uh, what's involved in your success as a leader? Uh, one idea that I propose is uh, being a good listener. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important uh, to uh, to listen and really understand what the viewpoints of others are if you're going to serve as someone who brings people together. Well, you certainly do that and there's that old saying that the second part of second most important part of a conversation is what's in it for the person speaking and so uh, you are I'm a fan um, and I know the city is going to miss you after your wonderful successful career and Claire and everything you've done to preserve and make Pasadena what it is today um, there are going to be big shoes to fill, and thank you for sharing your life and many of the career highlights with the question is, 
with Anthony Portentino. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much.